Hello and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, at the first, I would like to thank the organizers, uh, I mean the Department of Near and Middle Eastern Civilization, uh, and also Graduate Student Association to have convened this annual symposium. And another thank to my dear friend Robert uh, that um, arranged this video conference. Let me start by the title of my presentation. As you have noticed from the title of my paper, it's primarily about the formation and formatting of Islamic ethno-identity among Caucasian nations. However, my main concern of this, uh, this presentation because of the time limitation deals with the Muslim identity in the region. Most of the data are based on my field studies in North and South Caucasus between 2007 till 2013. My geographical concentration is on this area, as you see, I mean more east, northeastern, and northwestern. This area or this region includes Azerbaijan Republic, Dagestan, Chechenia, Ingushetia, Adigye, Karachay, Cherkessia, Kabardino, Balkaria. In the paper, I have tried to collect different cultural and historical data about Muslims in the region. Mainly, my focus was on these factors. As you see, the first one is background of Islam. By background, obviously, I mean the history and Islamic culture among Caucasian Muslims. For studying the history of Islam in the region, I should draw your attention in the early Islamic centuries and Arab conquests in the Caucasus. Uh, I think you heard about the Durban and establish of Islamic dynasties there. But historically, after the Arab dynasties in the Middle Ages, we see the effectiveness of Ottoman and Persian empires on Islamic identity in the region, especially after 15th centuries. For example, east and west of the Caucasus are totally different on Islamic sects. In east, we have mostly Shia or Sufi because of Safavid Empire's religious policy. And on contrary or unlike in west, we have Sunni Hanafi because of Ottoman uh, Empire's policy. Furthermore, there were several Islamic movements against Russian Empire in 19th century. For example, Imam Shamil and Sheikh Mansour's movements are most known. The next, um, actually the next, um, the next factor is Russification and Russian colonization. Of course, when they came to the south, Russia needed some uh, social reforms for their stabilized power in the region and in the border with Persia and Ottoman. The next one is the status of religion under the Soviet Union. We know almost how it was, but understanding the structure of religious institutions in this period is very important. There were some Islamic official institutions such as Muslim, uh, Caucasus Muslims administration that still we have it in Azerbaijan with the same structure and even in Tatarstan and Central Asia, for example, Bukhara Madrasat or uh, in Tashkent even in Tatarstan and so on. The next one, the next factor is the role of Islam among the people after the collapse of the Soviet Union. We can see in this period exactly after the collapse change in naming their children with Islamic names, the reconstruction of mosques, doing religious practices, creating religious schools, sending youth uh, to study Islamic lessons to other Muslim countries like Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Egypt and even Iran. Um, after this, actually this factor we will see, or after this step, we will see the formation of religious ethnic identity. In this period, I mean the end of the 90s, we are seeing the differences between Chechenia Muslim to Azerbaijani Muslim or Avari Muslim. They separated themselves from each other. Then we will see, we will find growth of extremes and Islamic fundamentalism and then the formation of security crisis and armed conflicts based on radical Islamism. 
the most important one is uh, russo chechen conflict, you know, or generally crisis in the North Caucasus based on extremism. As still, we can see in, uh, in all of the region this kind of this situation still. In Azerbaijan, it was a bit different. Maybe it wasn't uh, armed conflict, but definitely it was a security crisis for for Azerbaijani um, authoritarian. The next one uh, is state and Islam. I mean the relation between state, government, and Islam in the Caucasus. And um, sometimes governments have tried to control the religious institutions and having a fixed definition of official religion in the country. Azerbaijan or Chechenia after the second Russo Chechen war uh, under K uh, Kadyrov regime and Aliyev regime are good samples. If we look at historical events of Caucasus region, from a cultural point of view seeking to understand the national identity beyond ups and downs, generations and dynasties, we shall face a concept of ethnic and religious identities which have apparently been existed within the identity context for the people of this land. This is a concept having mostly cultural connotation result from historical and geographical position rather than political divisions and which has been derived from the language, custom, beliefs and ethics of various ethnic groups inhabiting the Caucasus. You see, this area has been registered as a most crowded ethnic religion or ethnic re uh, sorry, region in the world. And one of the interesting things about it is to study the formation of national identity among its ethnic groups which first express itself through ethnic identities under the dominance of regional governments including Ottoman, Persian and Russian empires and transformed into national identity over time through historical and social developments during 18-19 centuries which their effects are still observable in political divisions of the region. Anyway, population groups inhabiting the Caucasus are those who have been acquired a specific cultural nation and identity according to the environmental features climatic and geographic conditions of the area since genesis of social life in this land. This overshadows uh, elements such as religion, language, race sometimes and sometimes common cultural grants and, uh, and causes them to be expressed according to the status uh, of these newly emerging nations. Here often only a particular ethnic group have been the most dominant or effective uh, population group in the past of formation of Caucasian governments and its title represent the name of that country. Such titles however don't uh, actually do not necessarily have a pure ethnic concept and are just political terms derived from the name of an ethnic group. Modern countries of, Ar of Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia and other semi-independent republics in the region that have ethnic titles today from the mid-18th uh, century move in a direction where instead of ethnicity, geographic borders and political criteria determined uh, their unity and integrity. Perhaps we should not easily ignore the role of Khanats uh, that were formed during the Afshar and the Qajar eras uh, that created the small political units in the Caucasus region, especially I mean uh, in the east of the region. Let me move on Islamism and Islamic identity in the Caucasus. An important factor in the Sovietization of the new ethno-national elites uh, and populace of the multi-ethnic Muslim Caucasus has been the rediscovery of their Islamic heritage and the re-engagement with the Islam 
as a component of their nationhood and individual identity. The level and forms of this re-engagement have different significance across the region and uh, correlated uh, correlate, uh, with the socio-economic situation, the specifics of particular international regime and their approach toward opposition, uh, also the, uh, the degree of exposure to external Islamic and Western influences, and finally the depth and uh, longevity of Islamic tradition. Thus, initially, the social and political impact of Islam was most intensive in the northeastern Caucasus corresponding to present-day Russia's Muslim autonomies of Dagestan, Chechnya, and Ingushetia, characterized by a strong Sufi uh, Islamic presence which, uh, which, um, uh, which stored the decades of Soviet uh, atheism. It was less intensive in the northwestern Caucasus, corresponding to the to Russia's uh, Muslim autonomies of Kabardino-Balkaria, Karachayo Cherkessia, and Adigia, where the Islamic tradition was mosque-centered and therefore was seriously violated by the state-driven uh, destruction, uh, destruction of mosques and Islamic clergy. Re-Islamization has been the least intensive in the independent Republic of Azerbaijan, which is characterized by a higher level of secularization uh, resulting from its lengthier period of oil-related urbanization and westernization. From 2000, uh, however, the Islamic uh, resurgence has intensified in kabardino balkar while it has been uh, suppressed in Chechnya as a result brutal stabilize, stabilization by Kadyrov regime. In the North Caucasus, the aggravating factors has been the Russo chechen conflict escalating into um, two successive uh, devastating wars its jihadism, internationalism, and the growing political uh, assertiveness in Russia of Russian Orthodox Church, which campaigned for the restoration of its pre-Soviet status as a pillar of Russian nation. By contrast, in Azerbaijan, the Islamic dynamic has been shaped uh, by its wider exposure to external influences as a result of the country's uh, reconnection with Turkey, Iran, and the wider Middle East on the uh, one hand, as well as its higher level of oil-related economic growth, uh, westernization, and social uh, polarizations on the other. But alongside these differences, all Caucasian Muslims have experienced much in common in the ways that they have dealt with the rediscovered Muslimness uh, at both the state and individual levels. Thus, political and intellectual uh, elites uh, across the region have revoked their Soviet-era historical narratives and revisited their 19th century national debates, which identified Islam as a central component of their uh, respective national identities. All of them opted for the uh, preservation of the Russian invented uh, dichotomy between official and unofficial Islam under, although under the name or new names of traditional and under, uh, traditional Islam as an effective tool for the management and control of Islamic sphere. They have also exhibited striking similarities in the suppression and um, secu securitization of untraditional Islam of both Sunni and Shi'is orientations. Okay, thank you for your attention. I, I try to discuss only the vertical corner source of my studies uh, within 
the allocated time um, I invite you to fi uh, find in-depth details and samples and the full version of articles.